We found that in the average workplace, the average person spends two hours a day in drama arguing with reality. This is sick and wrong. This should not be happening. This is absolutely ridiculous. What a stupid idea. We shouldn't have to. How many of you spent at least a minute today in drama? Yeah. Two hours a day. Do you know how we found this out? There was an employee um, group that we were going to um, computerize their process in their area. They needed, rather than using pencil and paper, to use computers to document their processes. When we rolled this out, they were up in arms. They were horrified because they told us that if we made them use computers, productivity would not only decline, it could almost halt. They would spend so much of their time on the computer and the system and hardly any of their time getting their work done, and we should be very careful. And I believed them because I did not want to be the leader who screwed up the entire plant by insisting on computerization. So I wanted to study this. So we put people in the pods and we watched people work on the new system. We had a column to document how much time they worked on the computer and the keyboard and how much time they're able to do the work of processing their goods. And we found out within minutes we needed a third column. There's the column for work and the column for keyboard, the computer, and then there's the column for how much time they complained about the work and the keyboard. <laughs> yeah, we're all guilty of this, aren't we? Yeah, we burn a ton of calories every day. We invest a ton of energy in drama every single day, average person up to two hours. Now, you are all involved in lean. You all are looking for the next major improvement in your process. Can you imagine what heroes you would be if you went to your leadership and said, boss, I found a little bit of waste, two hours per person per day. I think we can eliminate it. Do you know what that would skyrocket in your productivity, your competitive advantage, your value-added model? Amazing stuff. So that's the first thing we found out that was a big difference. Difference in levels of drama. Second difference, this blew me away, I actually thought that our suffering was caused by our circumstances and that our happiness was related to our circumstances. I thought if you had really good work circumstances, great benefits, a friend at work, people who cared about you, all the tools you needed to do your work, all the communication, all that stuff, you'd be happy. And I found out that in the same workplace there are unhappy and happy people It can't be the workplace. Have you noticed some of you are happy and some of you are chronically unhappy? You've met people in the same circumstances, one happy, one not. We started to look into that research and we found out that happiness is not correlated to your circumstances, although we want your company to continue with the good stuff. We're not telling them to stop that anytime soon. Your happiness is correlated to the amount of accountability you take in your life. The difference between unhappy and happy people is happy people do not see themselves as victims. And then we went on to find suffering is completely optional. I thought this was big news. There are two ways to go through these jobs. One is with joy and one's with misery. Same job. Two ways. And suffering is optional because suffering is usually self-imposed. And suffering is not what comes from our circumstances. Our pain doesn't come from our circumstances. It comes from the story we make up about our circumstances. This should not be happening. This is sick and wrong. Our stress in our lives isn't from our reality. It's from the stories we make up about our reality. Let me give you a quick example. I do a lot of hiking. Love hiking hiking. There is no stress in my life when I'm on a mountain, beautiful sunshine. Just got back this last year from a dream trip. I got to hike in Mexico in the mountains. It was just incredible. No issues until Tuesday afternoon on the mountain. I'm walking along. I see something up on the path, on the ground, kind of squiggly. <laughs> Big squiggly. Now, it is there. I am here. In fact, it's not even there. It's in Mexico, and some of you are already stressed making up stories about what it is. I haven't even told you yet. <laughs> it's in Mexico, you guys. You're okay. 
It was over there, and the minute I saw that squiggly thing on the ground, I decided it was a snake. My respirations went up, my need to urinate went up, <laughs> my reasoning skills went down, I'm freaking out. To make it worse, I'm the leader of a bunch of people I can't run screaming off the mountain. Now what caused my stress? Whatever's on the path or my thinking? What about what's on the path? Which one caused my stress? Your thinking, my thinking. And here's how I know. Because even though for the next 10 footsteps it was grueling, talk about exhausting work, just picking up my leg and talking it into going forward took everything I had. My mind was racing. I'm like, if I get bit, am I supposed to suck my own blood or was that bad now? Was that good or bad? <laughs> it was a horrible next 10 steps. I am like creaking along and then I get up and I see that it's not a snake. It is a rope of somebody's saddlebags. <laughs> and yet, how often do we, probably but minutely, every minute, make a rope into a snake at work or at home? My team used to do it. We'd get a call. It was called a headquarters, but it was really just the lead box. It was a glass box up above that they could see the whole plant. My group would get a call. It'd go like this. They'd go, how many head count do you have on the line and what's the throughput? Doesn't that seem like a reasonable question? If we were just evidence-based, we got asked a question, the most valuable thing we could do would go get the answer and answer them right back. It would take seconds. They call, we look up in the computer, we go 15 head count, 2027 throughput. No emotion, no nothing. We add value. My team didn't act that way. That was the rope part. Here's how they made it into a snake. They would come find me. They'd go, Sai, oh my God, okay, so headquarters is calling, and they want to know what our throughput is and headcount, what should I tell them? We make, like, well, tell them headcount and throughput. I know, but here's the deal. We've all been talking, and we believe the reason they're asking this is because they want to combine line 12 with line 13, and you know, depending on what we give them, you know what they're thinking, don't you? They're thinking if they combine that, then they can roll their work off into plant B, and then we will get our hours cut, and we're the ones that always have to get sent home, and nobody else gets sent home, and it's totally unfair, and we're... Now, how much of that was made up? Should we just go with all of it? <laughs> rope and the snake? How many are a little guilty of ropes and the snakes? Yeah, we all are. So once we found that out, suffering's optional. We spend two hours a day in drama, and that happiness is related to accountability. It started to dawn on me, I maybe should come tell you these things so that you too could know exactly the shortcut to happiness at work, great results, high energy, high productivity, and most importantly, success. So here is